Okay, so just a little quick review so you can see it on video. Good things. It was amazing. Esme did such a great job. We talked about our feelings. Uh, talked about our grades. Get in. Uh, grades are due by uh, Thursday at 11.59. Warm up. I think we're going to skip the warm up today. And our learning. Okay, so write down this learning target today. Okay, so get ready to take some notes. Geom geometry is note very note heavy. But I will tell you this. I probably will either. My thing is when we take a geometry test, you're going to want to use your notes. Most likely, uh, I'll give you a note card. So you want to get information from your notes and into your note card. So you want to take good notes in geometry because there's just so much stuff to remember. All right. So I can use uh, operations with segments and angles. Okay. So that's what we're doing today. Any questions there? Okie dokie. So before we kind of move on to that and I show you kind of what we're doing, I want to get some things into our notes that we haven't talked about that we really need to get in. And I, and I kind of skipped them a little bit. So we need to actually get them formally into our notes. So let me uh, unfreeze this. Okay. So the first thing we want to talk about is a point. So write this down. Hey, um, Xavier, can you turn the lights off for us? I think it's actually can see a little bit. All right. So a point. All right. A point is a location in space with no size. It's what we call zero dimensional. Okay. We picture it with a dot and a capital letter. Now, you got to understand here, we're talking about an idea, and the idea cannot be drawn physically. So if you notice, this dot actually has some size, right, guys? But you have to understand that, in theory, this idea here is that it actually doesn't have any size. If Now, so it's a location in space but it has no size and it's zero dimensional. Well, and what do you mean by zero dimensional, Mr. Roden? It means if I am sitting on this point right here, I'll just draw another one so it's not in the way. If I'm sitting on this point, we'll call it point, uh, point uh, E for Eliana, right? Okay, now if I'm sitting on point E, if I move any direction, right or left, up or down, or at you, like through the screen or through the wall, I'm off the point. I'm no longer on the point. So I am no. the reason why it's zero dimensional is you cannot move. You're stuck there. Even if I move a milli, 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 teeny, 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 teeny millimeter to the right, I'm off the point. You guys understand that? Left, up, down. So you got to realize, even though there's a dot there, we have to remember that dot really has no size on the in, in space. It's just the it's just telling you where the location is. Do you guys understand that? Okay, so th that's the key thing about a point. Now, a line, and and the way we notate points are capital letters with a dot. Do you guys understand that? Okay. So when we're talking about a point, we're talking about a location in space. And the big thing is it has no size. It takes up no area on the board, even though the dot actually does. Okay. The next thing is a line. Okay. A line, a set of infinite points going in one direction and in the opposite direction. Okay. So here's the thing. A line is when you take a bunch of points, infinite number of points, and they go, they keep going in the same direction. They don't go up. Once they start in the direction, they keep going in that same direction. Okay. And remember, there's infinite number of points here and they never end. Okay. So a line is infinite. You cannot measure a line. Okay. Measuring a line, you cannot measure something that's infinite. Okay. Infinity is not a quantity. In infinity is an idea in mathematics that it has no, it's no bounds on it. Okay, so a line is infinite in both directions, okay? We picture a line with arrows on the end, okay? And two points or a cursive letter off to the side. So there's two ways we're going to show lines in here. We can name a line with HN and we can put an arrows over the top of that line. Do you guys see that? Or we can name a line with a cursive letter off to the side. This is a cursive L. Everyone, okay, 
cursive L. So we can just say this right here, this figure right here, we could call it line H L H N. We could call it line L, or we can just call it L. If you have a cursive uh, lowercase letter, that's an assumption that it's a le it's an entire line. Do you guys understand that? Okay. The last, not the last thing. The next thing we're going to talk about is a segment. Now we've talked about segments. Okay, segments is a part of a line with endpoints. Okay. So we can measure a segment. We measure the distance between. Um, there's something called a ruler postulate. Okay. And a ruler postulate is like the protractor postulate says that you can always put a ruler on a line and measure its its length. Okay. So we should probably write that down that the we have the ruler postulate. Okay. So there's a ruler postulate. Have we talked about the protractor, protractor postulate? Okay. There's also the ruler postulate. Okay. And the ruler postulate says that um, we can always measure the length of a line with a ruler. Bless you. Not a line, a segment. I apologize. We can always measure the length of a segment with a ruler. Now, the ruler could be a an inch ruler, a centimeter ruler, you know, whatever whatever units you're using. But there's always some sort of ruler that can measure that magnitude or length of that of that segment, and that's a postulate, right? It's just it's just a fact that we can always measure distance. Just like infinity goes on forever. Right. Well, that's that's yeah, that's more of a definition. Uh, a postulate more is a fact of kind of. It's not really a definition. It's more of a a fact, a, something that's true about something. Something that's true about a def, uh, something we've defined that we just can't really prove. All right. Uh, remember, uh, HN means segment. And how I know this is a segment is it doesn't have arrows on the symbol. You guys understand that? And then if we do HN without a segment symbol over the top, we're assuming we're taking the measure of it. And we talked about that. I think we talked about that on Friday. Right, guys? Yeah. That whenever we don't have a, a – whenever we don't have a segment measure over the top um, – a segment symbol, that means we're talking about its measure. Remember, guys, segments are congruent. Segments are congruent. Measures are equal. Okay, guys? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about. Most of the time, we're going to be dealing with planes. Okay? A plane. What? Do we get a plane? No. Different kind of plane. A plane is a flat surface. Oh, by the way, a line is what we call one-dimensional, okay? So on a line, let me go back to the line before we move on. A line is one-dimensional. So what do you mean by one-dimensional, Mr. Roden? Which means if I'm a point on this line, I can move to the left or I can move to the right. That's one dimension, okay? And it's not one direction. A dimension is right and left, right? If I move up or down, I'm off the line. If I start to move out at you, or in through the wall, I'm off the line. So a line is one dimensional. So I can move right or left and stay on the line. Whereas a point is zero dimensional. You guys see that? Okay. A point, you can't move at all. Think about a dimension is how many right, left, up, down, in, out moves you can make. Okay. All right. So now if we're talking about a plane, a plane is what we call two dimensional. Because what I can do is I can always move right or left, or I can move up and down, right? So a plane is two-dimensional. The only thing I can't do on a plane is move out at you or in through the wall. You guys understand that? So this guy right here, I can move right and left. And, and, and any combination of right, left, up and down will put me, I can, I can put it anywhere on a flat surface. Another thing, a plane has no thickness. And I used to always have a really hard time explaining to the kids what a plane was until I started using these light screens. Think about this. This is a perfect example of what a plane is. It's a flat surface, but this light has no thickness to it, right? See the screen? 
the light has no thickness to it. I don't think. I'm not, I'm not a physicist. But I did not believe this, this light right here has any thickness to it. It's just a flat screen. The only thing that this plane doesn't have is, it, in theory, a plane would go on forever. You guys understand that? Now, in football, what you have to remember is, you guys, all, they always say, did the ball cross the plane of the end zone? So you actually have to, you have to imagine that there's this invisible light screen at the beginning of the, the end zone in football. If the ball penetrates anywhere within that light screen, that's a touchdown. Okay? It does not, it can go anywhere in the, so you always see the guys like reach the ball over. Once that ball crosses the plane, it's over. And the plane, in theory, goes straight up, and it, it's a little pylon there on the end of it. You guys see that? Um, planes are two dimensionals. We name a plane using three letters, okay? Nonlinear letters, okay? So remember, you see, H, T, and G are not linear. Because if they were linear, then it would be a line, right? Okay, why do you think we have to use two, three? Why do you think we have to use three points and not two can I, to name a plane? Why can't we name a plane with 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 two points? Why, Chris? Because two points would be like a line. Yeah, we can. Two points would be a line, right? So we have to name a plane with three non-collinear points. Okay, and why do you think they have to be collinear? Why have to be? Excuse me, non-collinear points. Why, why do why do why do I make sure? So if I had like. If I had another point, like why could I name if let's say that T G and H T G and I are all on a line, why couldn't I just name this T I G? Because you're not counting H. Yeah, but why what if why do I why do I have to use H? Because it's in the plane. Yeah, but so is I. I's in the plane. Why, Xavier? Right, so I, what I could be doing is I could be naming the line and not the plane. You guys understand that? Good point. Yep. So you want to make sure they're non-collinear points. All right, so we could call this plane HGT, HTG. doesn't matter the order. Okay, any questions on just – this is just basics of geometry that we just add, add to our notes. Um, it's just kind of getting some definitions in there. Um, but um, that's kind of what we're going. Okay, now, on Friday, it, it, it actually kind of came together – we learned something. We actually proved something, right, using algebra and the properties of algebra. On Friday, we talked about the properties of algebra, and we proved something. What did we prove? We actually did a theorem. And hopefully we have this in our notes. This is our first theorem of the year. Caitlin, what was our theorem? Okay, vertical angles theorem. We used the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles theorem. And we actually did a proof, right? And what we did is we, we used, with the vertical angles theorem, we just subtracted off that common angle from both sides. We used substitution and set them equal to each other. We subtracted off the common angle, and we found that vertical angles are always equal to each other. Okay, really, really, really important fact. Okay, so... What we're going to do today is we're just going to practice some stuff about using vertical angles. We're going to just basically do some, some, um, just what do, what do we, so today's our, what's our learning objective today? Our learning objective is to, I can use operations with segments and angles. Yep. Okay. So let's get through it. So here are some problems that we're going to have. All right. So problem number one. So, uh, um, here we go. So it says point F is on a line segment EG. Given that EG is 16 and EF is 10, determine the length of FG. Okay, so the best way of what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to go ahead and let's go ahead and draw a segment, okay? So I got this segment here. So just a segment of random. Or ran units. Um, and here's the deal. In geometry, sometimes we don't add units, okay? We're just going to say they're just generic units, okay? So, yeah, so sometimes we in geometry, we don't even do units. We just say randomly. Okay. All right. So what do we know? What, because this is a segment, what do we have to put on the ends? Yep. And what are the points? E and G. E and G. So remember, guys, we always name a segment by its end points. You all see that? Okay. So E and G are just not on the segment. I mean, there could be lots of other points, 
They are actually the endpoints. Okay, now, now the next thing is we have some random point F on this segment somewhere. And I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm randomly just going to put F somewhere in the middle. Now, it may not be proportional. So when I actually figure it out, I may not have everything I need. Okay. So first thing it says is it says that E to G is 16. So the entire length from here to here is 16. No, it's saying from E to G is 16, right? So it's saying this whole distance from here to here is 16, right? E to F is 10. So this, and how do I know I'm measuring a, 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 a length here? How do I know that EG is a length? Doesn't have the line on top, right? Yep. Okay. So we want to figure out what is the, what is the length of FG? So how would we figure that out? What would we do here, Chris? What would we do? Yeah, you subtract. So this is really an angle addition postulate, right? Excuse me, not angle addition postulate, segment addition postulate. It says the parts, the as you add the parts, the parts equal the whole, right? So we know if we take EF, the measure of EF, and we take the measure of FG and add them together, we get the entire thing. So yeah, you're just going to, this one is just going to be 16 minus 10, which equals 6, right? So we know that HX equals 6. Now, definitely it's not to scale. Obviously, F should be um, a little over here on this side, but we're not going to worry about it. Okay. See that? All right. So now we can use algebra. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to go ahead and see if you can't draw this out and algebraically solve this. So remember, guys, algebra is always fair game for us. What you learned last year in Mrs. Wilson's class, we can always apply to what we learned here. Everything in algebra is fair game. Tegan. That's okay. If you forgot, that's all right. But remember, in geometry, you have to know what you can use and what you can't use. Okay? We can use algebra. We have to have our reasons. Now, if you forgot a reason, that's okay. We can review that. But, like, I can't use um, – let me just give you an example. We're going to learn about parallel – we're going to learn about something called alternate interior angles. I can't use that until I actually prove it or – put it into my list of reasons. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying to you is anything you learn in algebra, whether you need to review it or not, is fair game. Quadratics, systems of equations, slope, distance formula, even the Pythagorean theorem, which is not proven yet, we're allowing you to use it. Okay? So, yeah, there are some things. I think area of circles, perimeter, stuff like that, we're going to allow you to use also. Yep. Just because we're kind of cheating a little bit. A real geometry class would build everything from the ground up, but we're giving you some things freebies. Okay, so first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and draw a segment here. All right? So how should we name this segment? Someone raise, uh, let's do some sticks here. Want someone want to pull sticks? Ooh, yay. Who wants to pull sticks today? I do. Who has never pulled sticks? They would like to pull sticks. Will, would you like to pull sticks? All right. Here we go. Will. Will, you've never pulled sticks? No. Never. Okay, Will, pull me a stick on this one. Here, go. No, you can't cherry pick the sticks. All right, Esme. Well, the sticks like you. All right, you must have, did you like have a little sticky stuff when you made, I don't know. I don't know. All right, did you put a little glue on your stick? All right, here we go. Esme, go ahead. Uh, first of all, how can I name this segment right here that I've drawn on the board? How can I, what can I put on here? Okay, so this is going to be segment BD, right? I'm going to put a B here. And where should I put the, where should I put the D? At the end. Good. Okay. So what else should I do, Esme? Okay, so I got to put a point, point what? D? C. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a C on there. Okay. How about right there? There's C. Okay. What should I do next? Okay, so BC from B to C is this is 4x, right? C to D is 4, okay? 
Well, we got to figure out what B to D is, right? So what is so B to D? How long is B to D? That's what that's five x. Is that right? Okay. So now we need to write an equation here. Did you guys see how we have this set up? Now we need to write an equation. Did I do something wrong there, Sophia? No. Okay. You don't disagree with what I have on the board? No, I don't. Okay. It's stick time, Will. All right, Tess. What would be the equation we could write for this, Tess? Now, remember, segment addition postulate says the parts equal the whole, right? So what are the, the sum of the parts equal the whole? What are the two parts that we could add together, Tess? Okay, so what is the expression or measure of BC? Yep. 4x plus we can add, what is the measure of CD? And what is the whole? What is that going to equal? 5x. Very good. So this is reviewing variables on both sides of the equation, correct? So when we solve an equation with variables on both sides test, what do we need to do? What do we do to solve for x? So we're going to subtract 4x's. We want to get all variables on one side, right, guys? So we want to subtract 4x on both sides. So on this side right here, guys, we're going to get what, Tess? Oh, man, Tess. Okay, and then what do we have on the other side, Tess? X. So we have x equals 4. Now, are we done, class? No, we're trying to figure out the measure of BD. We want to find the measure of BD. So, Will, pull me a stick. And this student is going to tell me what the measure of BD is. Okay. All right, Miss Sophia, how do we do that? So that's 16? Um, 16 plus 4 equals 20. 20. Okay. Or, what's another? So, perfectly. So, What's another thing we could have done? So what? What? Here's what uh, Sophia did. She said, she took BC plus CD equals uh, equals BD, right? And then so she said, okay, BC is 16 plus CD is four. 16 plus four is 20. Is there another way she could have done it, yeah. Martin? What do you think? Um, so since you already know that x equals 4, and since you know the length of what 1x equals, you could take um, that x to the 4 and substitute it for x and multiply 5 by 4. Yeah, so BD equals 5x, so we could just say BD equals 5 times 4, so BD equals 20. Now, either one is, is fine, because that's what segment addition postulate really says. It says it doesn't matter. You could do Sophia's method and add the sum of the parts, or you could do Sophia's method, or excuse me, Sophia's method and do the sum of the parts, or Martin's method, okay, and just put it in there. Okay, excellent. All right, next problem. So this one is going to involve angle addition postulate. Okay. So this is going to involve angle addition postulate. So first of all, we need to figure out what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the measure of angle CDF. CDF. So let's figure out where CDF is. CDF is right here. We always measure an angle using its middle point as its vertex. So we want to find the measure of that angle right there. Now, it's not 97 degrees. Do you guys understand that? The entire angle from here to here is 97 degrees. So how could we figure out the measure of angle CDF? Um, Will, you want to pull me a stick? All right, Austin. How can we figure that out, Austin? Uh, you do 97 minus 31. Right. And that's, again, that's angle addition postulate, right? Because if you take CDF and you add that angle FDE, 
you're getting the entire CDE angle. So very good. So what is 97 minus 31, Austin? <clears throat> Do we all agree that that angle right there is 66 degrees? Okay, no big deal. Yep. Okay. So that's a good, that's just a good example of using angle addition postulate. All right. So the next one is, on this one, we want to figure out the measure of angle B and the measure of angle C. So draw this out. This is a really good one. Okay, we haven't done a lot with this yet. We want to find the measure of angle B and the measure of angle C. Now, first thing we want to do. Now, in geometry, it's much more important to know why you can do something than to just get an answer. Okay, and I really want to emphasize that. Geometry is a thinking class. It is not just a robot class where you get the answer and you get it right and you feel good and you get a good grade and you are happy. That's not what you're doing. Geometry makes you think about why you can do something. A logical reason. You cannot just do things and get an answer. Even if it's right, it doesn't matter if you didn't follow the correct thinking here. So... I want you to study this, and I want someone to tell me we want to figure out B and C, but we want to know why we can figure out B and C. I'll take a volunteer on this one. Can anyone figure out one of these and why? All right, Chris, go ahead. Okay, so to get B, you would subtract 180 from 99 and get 81 because of that angle equals 180 degrees. Okay, so here, so what angle are you talking about? B to 99. Okay, so Chris is saying this. From here to here, how many degrees is that angle? 180. Why do you know that? Because of, it's a straight line. Because it's a straight line. It's a straight line, right? So what's a word that describes angle B and the 99 degree? What, 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 what's the relationship between those two angles, Tanner? Mm -hmm. They're supplementary, but they're also what? They're not congruent. Congruent means they're the same measure. Oh, they're, adjacent. They're, adjacent. they're adjacent. So ladies and gentlemen, I think on Friday we said if two angles are adjacent and supplementary, what, what's the word that describes those or words? They are a linear pair. They're a linear pair, right? So we could say this. We could take B plus 99 equals... 180 because they're a linear pair. And then what can we do, Chris, to solve for this? Subtract 99. Yep, we can subtract 99 from both sides. So what do we get, Chris, when we take 180 minus 99? 81. What? 81. We get 81. So that's 81 degrees. So they're not congruent. Does everyone understand that? Okay. So congruent... And they're not congruent because if they were, they'd have the same measure. By definition, congruence means they have the same measure. All right, Will, pull me a stick on this one. Oh, wow. All right, keep going. Chris just went. We want to spread the fun around. All right, Eliana. Now we need to find C. So, Eliana. How could we find C? It's very easy. What's the relationship? With, C has a very special relationship with a number here. So look at this, Eliana. Do you notice this angle right here, angle C? See that? Do you notice that angle C, and I'll do it in blue, doesn't mean they're right angle. See these two angles? See how they point to each other kind of? See those two angles? See how they kind of, they, and, they, and they are both kind of sideways Vs? You see that? So Eliana, those two angles right there, we have a very special word for those angles right there. These two angles right here, since they point to each other, those two angles are vertical angles, okay? Now, Eliana, what do we know about vertical angles? We proved it on Friday. Eliana? What do we know about what do we know about vertical angles? Help her out. What's what do we know about vertical angles? Uh, Eliana, why don't you choose a friend to help you out? What do we know? Someone help. 
They're always congruent. Very good. So we know that C is equal to what, Eliana? What? Not equal to 90. Nope. Look at the picture. 99 degrees. Because remember, guys, if they're congruent, they have the same measure. You guys see that? Awesome. Okay. I want everyone to try. Yes. George and I did it a different way. Now, there is a different way using supplementary and linear pairs, right? Can we say that? Thank you, Mark. You can do it that way. What I want to emphasize here is the vertical part. Okay. Your job, ladies and gentlemen, is to figure out H, G, M, K. Go. Draw this out. Now, guys, if you are on a computer, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use... Uh, if your, your computer is open, that's because you are typing in notes, correct? So here's what's going to happen. In a minute here, I'm going to have Will pull sticks, and you just get a pick which angle you want to find and explain your reasoning. That last one, I kind of made it about vertical angles because I wanted to emphasize that point. But Martin was correct. Martin, was, Martin and George did it using supplementary and, and um, linear pairs in the other direction. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure we understood what vertical angles meant. But now it's, it's up to you to figure out. There's multiple ways to do it as long as you have good logical reasoning. Okay, another minute or two, and then we will start pulling sticks here. Okay, Will, pull me a stick. This student's going to tell me the measure you found and how you found it. You, any order you want. All right, Mr. Cody, which one do you would you like to tell us what's equal to and, and how you got that? Okay, and then so why do you know you could subtract those? It's a straight angle, linear pair, all that stuff. Do we all agree that this is a 76 degree angle? Okay, very good. Nice job, Cody. All right, Will, pull me another stick. All right, Dakota. Anything besides H? Go. What? Which was the first one? Here's a hint. G is really, really easy. It's so easy. Think about this way. They point to each other. Look, I'll do the colors again. Look, here's, here's angle G. Sorry, I kind of missed. And here's the other angle. Okay. Jeez, stop. Okay, here's the deal. See those? See how those angles point to each other? Kind of decode if I draw if I drew them better? So what do you notice? What's the word that describes those two angles? It rhymes with schmertical. What rhymes with schmertical in this class? And what do we know about vertical angles? Verti Eliana read it off. Vertical angles are always what? It rhymes with mongruent. Oh, congruent. So what do you know that angle G is equal to, Dakota? Very good, because it's it's vertical, right, to 104. So G equals 104. Okay, good. All right, yeah, terrible drawing, by the way. Okay, all right, Mr. Uh, Will, pull me a stick. All right, Mr. George, M or K, which one do you want? M? Okay, so what is the measure of angle M, George? 93 degrees, and how did you get that? Well, if you subtract 
Yep. So what George is saying is this is a linear pair, 180 degrees, 180 minus 87 is 93. You guys great that? Yeah. Nicely done. Okay, the last one. Uh, Will, who is it? All right, Nicole. So you got K, Nicole, and you really don't have any choices now. What's K equal to Nicole? And how do you know that, Nicole? Uh, the other Why? Why is it congruent? Uh, What's the word? Uh, vertical. vertical. Okay, so vertical angles vertical. are congruent. All right, nice job. Okay, last one. Uh, not the last one, but try this one. Solve for D. We're gonna use it. Algebra. I hate algebra. Who? Who has? Okay, algebra. I'll leave table at the bro. Algebras. I like that. That's a good joke. I love that joke so much. So remember, anything that we learned in Mrs. Wilson's algebra class is fair game. So. In this case, I think we're going to use, what, a two-step equation here, right? All right, Mr. Will, pull me a stick. Oh, let's take a volunteer on this one. Who wants to, just for time. Caitlin, take it away, Caitlin. I need an equation. What's the equation I can write? Okay, so here's the deal. If I take 6D plus 4, that's this angle right here, right? And then I add 62 to that right here. I add that angle right there. What does that have to equal, Caitlin? Okay, that's angle addition postulate. Does everyone understand that? These two angles equal the straight angle, 180 degrees. Now we're going to use algebra to solve, right? So how do we solve? What do we do next, Caitlin? Sure. What is 180 minus 62? 180. One eighteen. One eighteen. So I got sixty plus four equals one eighteen, right? Subtract four, you get sixty equals one fourteen, right? And then divide both sides by six. What do you get? So D equals nineteen. Now, if we wanted to figure out this angle, we would just plug nineteen in for D. Do you guys understand that? Okay. So homework. Homework is due on Thursday. Let me. It is Delta Math. If you go into your uh, Schoology, I, I wrote it under the homework section in Delta Math. You guys see that? Okay, I am now going to stop sharing, and I will post this into videos.